All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So markets today, a uh, little bit of whipsaw, though. Most of the day, probably about 90% of the day, was very, very uneventful chop. Uh, we were kind of just in this range. Uh, we did have a little bit of a spike down there. Powell was speaking today. We also had ISM. We had ADP number, uh, ADP jobs number uh, this morning coming in hotter than expected. And it was also revised up, I believe, from the, the, the last month. It was revised up. And you're going to see uh, futures kind of selling off a little bit. Then at 10 a.m., we got ISM. And that came in uh, cooler than expected, much cooler. So we got this big bid. And it, you know, it's funny how <laughs> we get like, scorching hot inflation prints for the last two days and it takes all this effort just to sell off and then um we get one decent data point and we pump like 30 points in like seven minutes um just funny how that works but in any case markets um got a bid where did they go you guys already know where they went because i told you i've been telling you guys for the last two days 5230 watch that level that's a big deal um i was looking to get a short off up here this morning in the trading room and look at where they got 5228 spot 75 so it didn't quite get filled on that was waiting for that all morning and uh we didn't get there we got a little little dip here lower high a little shakeout towards the end of the day which i think was just kind of bogus take a look here um, we're already above that in the after hours, uh, that breakdown high there on the futures. So what does this mean? Bottom line, right now you've got higher lows, um, 5,200 held again. Granted, 5,230 did not, uh, the bulls did not recapture that. So right now it's a little neutral. Um, the dominant trend still upside bias above all the moving averages above the 20 MA. Um, dips are still being bought. We're inside of this channel. No real problems, but um, lately, right? And again, even just go back to the futures. Like the last, this two days in a row now that we didn't get that auto bid, right? Like if we had a sell off the last five months for a day or so, like what we had the last two days, we would have just done this overnight, right? We would have just done this overnight. Ha ha, you bought puts in the close. Yep, you're screwed basically, right? That type of deal, we, we've been seeing that a lot. Last two days, we did not see that. So little change in character got to notice those things um and it is noticeable that we didn't really follow through on the rally today although the shakeout was essentially negated by the close uh, or at least now i'm doing this video at four you know 24 24 here and we're, we're above that breakdown bar high um right now or at least right at it on the spiders so uh or the futures so again give the market the upside bias until proven otherwise. But if tomorrow, for whatever reason, if we can't break above uh, 52.30 tomorrow, that's like, that's a kind of a red flag, right? What? It shouldn't take more than two days to break that, right? Especially in this environment where we're just straight up with no pullbacks, uh, literally no pullbacks since October. So that would be a red flag. We have NFP on Friday. So who knows, t maybe tomorrow, they could just chop us around again. Um, again, we have NFP on Friday, so market may just wait on that. They could just uh, theta burn this tomorrow and make us go sideways. 5,200 has been a magnet. It was a magnet all day yesterday. Look at that. They brought us right back into it today. So maybe that gets tested again. But that's our range right now, 52 to 5,230. If we come back down, if this can't get broken here, I think you're actually, you have a case that there's actual bear stuff going on, bear play in here. Um, again, 5180, that's my line in the sand right there. We almost got there yesterday, uh, especially if you close the hourly below that green bar right there, 5225 area. Um, excuse me, uh, 5194, sorry. So that was the low of today. Um, it would be a failure that could take you down to this green line or a blue line. And I'm all messed up today. The <laughs> blue line, which coincides with what? Oh, 5180, almost perfectly. So I think that's kind of an important area. If that breaks, I think that's just that's damaging this uptrend, right? Um, and that would tell us that we're likely in corrective mode. So uh, keeping it really simple that way, and that's just how I'm looking at it currently. Um, triple Q's here. So they managed to scratch out a gain of a dollar. So they were up a little bit more than the spiders. By the way, 
that little shakeout did not phase the Russell. That was probably telling you that uh, market was going to recover here. Uh, so I, uh, QQQ still holding that green bar low. And again, it's still, um, re, you know, reclaim the 20 moving average. By the end of the day, IWM, same thing, um, closing uh, above the 20 MA. And, um, you know, it looks okay right now, despite the little sell that we had yesterday. Dow also holding up, but it was down. Again, a little bit of a weaker pattern. I don't like that outside move and uh, kind of sideways action. So Dow on the weaker side right now. Um, still, a little bit of, still a little bit of support at 390, though, at the moment. Um, SMH here, that was up 90 cents. So nothing terrible here. It's still holding up okay. Um, one thing I'd note, though, is the leader, NVIDIA, did not participate in that little uh, end-of-day pop, right? So we had that little V-shape there. NVIDIA not really doing anything, and it's actually kind of bare flagging. You know, if you look at the last half hour, um, it just went sideways and kind of bare flagged there. Um, after hours, it's up $2, so it's like right there. And again, just to look at the ES. Yeah, ES is above the breakdown, NQ right at or above the breakdown. So NVIDIA, notably a little bit of a laggard. How much did we make out of it? Well, nothing yet until we see uh, a little bit more here, but semis up 90 cents. Again, we'll leave it there. IGV still remains kind of weak though. Again, it was green today, but again, watch this trend line here. If that back tests and get re gets rejected, I mean, in, in fact, you could, we could crisscross this too and uh, bring this, up, bring this uh, over watch that area. If that gets rejected, we're probably going down. So watch that. Uh, transports holding up okay above the moving averages. Nice dip yesterday, and then they came right back up. Again, you, know, you guys know my thoughts there. Um, I still think the transports are in pretty good shape. Um, interest rates here via the two-year first. Again, I talked about this yesterday. Um, I think rates got to back off a little bit here, and they did, specifically on the short end. 30 still held up okay. Um, Again, steepener at the long end. Inflation expectations remain anchored. That's what I take out of that. I take out of it stagflation. I've been saying that for a long time. I don't need to reiterate it, but you guys get the idea. I do think we'll back off a little bit here, but I still think rates are strong, and I think we can still go to 4.75 on the 30-year. Um, might take a little bit of consolidation first, though. Again, like I said yesterday, not really like a convincing breakout candle, right? We came off the highest two days in a row, and there's a lot of bond shorts, too, so if like maybe NFP comes in a little bit chillier than expected. You can see those shorts cover quickly. Um, it will probably be a buying opportunity though for yields. Um, XHB again holding trend here. This does not want to give up that 20 moving average right now, and um, it is still very strong. VNQ holding the um, 83.24 area so far didn't quite get there. Got to 83.41. As long as we're above there on a weekly close, this pattern is still good. XLF, a little bit on the weaker side, down two cents. Um, I noticed this all day long. Actually, JPM, uh, actually read the last three days. This is a stock, look at all these green candles. It has one red day and then has like four green, right? It's had three red in a row, two red in a row right there. So maybe starting to run out of momentum. I bring this up because it's a big component of XLF um, and it's the leading financial stock, really. So um, and you can see it's basically the same chart as the XLF. Um, again, we'll watch this weekly. Especially a close below last week's low would be um, a sign that this is probably needed, uh, needing to pull back here. But um, down two cents today. Let's not get too excited. KRE down as well. You guys know my thoughts on both of these. I don't need to reiterate it every day. Um, XBD here going sideways and flagging. That can go higher still. So oil continuing up here up 40, 48 cents. It did come in off the highs. Um, it's getting overbought. It's getting a little uh, stretched here. Um, this can still go up to 91 in the big picture. I don't think it'll go in a straight line. And we're, I went, I'm very interested to see where this closes at the end of the week. Remember, I talked about the 618 yesterday. You know, who's to say we don't pull back today, or tomorrow and Friday, and then close below that? And you can make a case, okay, it held on the weekly, right? So I'm interested to see where it closes the week, and um, we'll reserve some judgment until then. But it was green today. XLE was green again, so that continues to power up. Um, Got to keep going back to these longer time frames for this again yeah there's a little bit of a level at 98 or so and then obviously double top they don't know, maybe it gets there we'll see um it is parabolic now though so unsustainable move same thing with xop it's getting to unsustainable territory here you're going parabolic you got another level here at 
about 161, 162, and then like there's a gap fill all the way up at 162, 68 as well, and then 170. I do think these will make all-time highs. Um, XOP is, well, maybe not XOP. <laughs> it's a long ways away. Um, XLE, I definitely will think, but um, they are a little overbought right now. Um, and then OIH, I think this one has a ton of upside as well. But um, again, same thing, a little overbought here. My original target for this was about 355. We're almost there. So um, maybe I sold a little too early, but still had a really good gain anyway. Uranium back to being on fire. A um, little bit of a level here for CCJ at 50. And then the double tops, and then it can go higher. URNM, a little bit weaker now. So notice how CCJ is almost back to the highs already after underperforming for a couple months. And now URNM is not near the highs yet after over outperforming um, for a little while. NJ, close. Uh, a little bit of a level there at 29. But again, sector still looks good. And uh, it's holding up well. Uh, Nat gas down a penny today. I think this needs to maybe consolidate another day or so. And then I think it can go work its way towards 2 and then 220. Um, but a little pullback there after a big pop the other day. I do like it on the K contract a lot um, with that nice fake breakdown setup. All right, what else? Dollar index, um, big pullback here. So dollar down a half a percent. And this just got pounded. All, look at this. No bounces all day. Not one. So um, pretty good sell there. This should go retest 104. Maybe 103.75, 103.80. Um, but I knew well, we knew 105 was going to be resistance, right? We talked about that. It's clear as day. But again, before we get too bearish on it, just can still put in higher lows. There's nothing saying that can't happen. So just neutral right now. But uh, 104 is the next level there. For the Dixie Gold, continuing to, excuse me, continuing to melt up, up another 1.6. I still think this has some gas in the tank. It is getting overbought, yes, but that's what happens when you put in a base for 13 years. So there you go. Um, and it is breaking out. And it can still go higher. I would not try to fight it. Um, silver also had another really big day, up 5%. So another big ripper. Uh, next level for this is 27.50 to 28 right there. Uh, 27.50 and then 28 was your previous breakdown. So that's where I think this wants to go in the near term. If this holds this area here by the end of the week, um, that's a confirmed breakout. I think it will. Um, that doesn't mean it can't pull back at some point. I do think it will do that as well. But it is holding up. Um, GDX also getting a little overbought here going into. It is above these levels here on the weekly. Give it. I'm giving it credit there. Um, going into this next big level here, though. But miners still looking very strong. SIL looking very strong. And SILJ looking very strong, too. Um, so miners acting. Well, look at the volume on that. Big, big, big surge there. Um, platinum, another good day. This should get up to 1,000. Palladium, um, a little bit on the weaker side. I'm still holding. I'm still in this. And um, speaking of platinum, everybody loves gold and silver right now. And they should. It's on breakout. But... Why is nobody talking about palladium? So everybody loves gold and silver now that they're all at the highs. You should really love something that's undervalued, right? I think I just look at this chart and I just I see upside, right? So um, if this PM move is legit, which I believe it is, why wouldn't you want to own the one that's at historic lows here? A lot of catch up to be had for this. Um, yeah, copper. New 52-week highs. <laughs> so my, my level here uh, held at the 20 MA, and um, we did take that in the trading room. I wish I was still holding it. Uh, again, it's kind of more of a day trade type action, but um, copper at 421. Next big level right up here around 425, and then you got the pivot up there. Uh, big breakdown area, right? But you have higher lows, so that's the positive for copper. So right, you know, right now we'll just say 425. We'll give it the upside bias there. Um, it's also getting overbought too, but this is what commodities do, right? All right, um, Bitcoin still holding up. Uh, higher lows. Watch for lower high. You don't want to lose this here. That would kind of damage that higher low struct structure. That's nothing terrible though. Again, on the weekly is still fine. And um, there's no problems here, but it is backing off a little bit, which, you know, it needs to do. It's at a big run. 
All right, so um, again, just to wrap up, 52.30 tomorrow. That's still in play. Watch out for Theta Burn and uh, maybe an indecisive market ahead of NFP. Uh, we do have jobless claims, though, so that could give us some volatility in the morning. I think there's some other economic data, too. Uh, I don't know. I'll check it later. It's not a, not that big of a deal anyway. But in any case, uh, markets are holding up okay. Um, below 5200 and obviously 5180 would be your big line in the sand. But um, for right now, um, again, watch 5230. That's kind of that's the bigger level to me here. And uh, then obviously we have NFP on Friday, which I think will decide direction moving forward. So anyways, guys, can wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me on ConoverTrades.com. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.